And I wanted to talk about what you and Solomon were talking about earlier, which was Bernie sticking to his stump for too long. Uh, a lot of us have been following him for a long time. Like We've been hearing him say the same thing over and over again, but he has all these amazing policies. And when you guys were talking about education and, and funding and how, how uh, he's got all these unique and wonderful ideas about how to completely change our system, and he's got the ideas about how to pay for it, a lot of the people watching didn't even know. But, and these are Bernie fans. Like These are people who love Bernie already, and they don't even know what he's doing and how he's going to pay for it and how he's, he's going to make all of this work. So I think that Bernie and the campaign really need to take a look at speaking up to their voters and, and respecting their intelligence in the, in the sense that we don't need them to repeat, you know, we don't need him to repeat the same stump speech over and over again. We need him to actually give us a little more. Can I, can I, yeah. can I ask you a question? And this is just between us and family. Right? <laughs> Do you think that I'm not I'm not an ageist. I think he's sharp, but I think it do you why else? Let me start here. Why else would it be that he's not talking about all of these other things that are so so amazing in his platform where he is quite literally beating Hillary Clinton hands down on so many issues? Why else do you do you think that he would not talk about those things uh, and and just stick with his, his stump speech, which is important, right? I'm not neg neglect negating the importance of the significance of his stump speech, but some of the things that he's not talking about to me is such a gaping hole and is such a missed opportunity that I wonder if it, um, I wonder if it's a just his recall he needs to be able because let me okay let me put it like this as a person who speaks extemporaneously every single night um it is there are certain things that i just go to because it's recall and i think i wonder if that's the challenge that he's having who wants to tackle that without sounding ages well no no so so i've been following bernie for about eight years now um just because i've i've heard him speak on Tom Hartman, I heard him speak on other on other channels, and when you get in a conversation with this man, when you have him in a small room, when you have him in um, a, a, an intimate setting where he's not, you know, answering from big crowds and having to kind of make sure he stays on point and on message, you'll get what you're looking for. So mm -hmm. one of the videos that I found, and I'm going to link this in our chat, it was a Louisiana home visit that Bernie did way back when, like seven or eight months ago. Um, he was going through the South, and he wanted to go into people's homes and sit and speak with them and just listen to them. Um, and so this is, a, this is a cell phone video of someone inside a house with Bernie Sanders way early on and him just having a conversation with people and him responding to their needs. And so I'm going to link this, and I encourage people to just go watch it. Yeah. He can talk like this. He has the, the mental aptitude. <laughs> He's, he has, he, so he, it's, not, it's not an egg thing at all. No, so no. I, my next question would be, um, is where I landed, where I, where I landed, so I could avoid sounding ageist. Uh, where I landed was the extemporaneous nature of it, right? That once you're on, listen, once you're on the air and you're talking to people, it's going, it, it's not going to go as planned ever. And and I wonder if Bernie Sanders is just running into that extemporaneously as he speaks, and, and he's not always extemporaneous. Well, hell, it's written. Most of the time, his speeches are written, you know. Um, but. I, I just wonder if it's a matter of not being able to flow into the details because I don't think it's a problem of him talking, um, being afraid to talk up to his voters. I think it's a problem of him not being able to just fit it in as smoothly as, his do as he does his regular stump speech. I don't know. We're, we're in the weeds now trying to figure out why he's not presenting this wonderful platform that he has that is kicking Hillary Clinton's butt in so many ways. Um, and it's going to be a mystery. It's going to be something that people have to figure out uh, going forward. Um, uh, Noah, uh, throw it to you. What do you, what do you got for us, Noah? Well, just to go back to kind of kind of what you guys are talking about, kind of what Solomon was talking about, but go back to my point earlier, we really need to be focusing more on, instead of trying to get party elites and um, endorsements and stuff, we need yep. to be focusing on how do we empower the grassroots movement that exists, because there is a very strong grassroots movement. It may not be as strong in the black community, per se, in some areas, but when we're talking about Chicago, because since Chicago came up, the Chicago Teachers Union, Karen Lewis, love Karen, 
the Chicago Teachers Union endorsed Bernie Sanders, I believe it was last week. You know, Chicago activists have been kind of standing more aligned with like Sanders folks when you've had when you've had like you've had dual rallies and stuff with some of the Chicago activists and, 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 and Bernie folks. And there's a lot of stuff that's going on in Chicago. And I know the caller said they're not getting out there. And this is what I'm talking about, how we need the grassroots. We need people to actually go out into their communities and actually start talking to voters and talking to people because it's so great that you have all this stuff going on up here and we're talking to you know this person and this delegate and this person over here but that clearly we can get all these representatives on our team but that clearly is not translating to actually individual voters on the block we are not going to really convert the masses of establishment dim voters the ones who are turning out traditionally in primary season we need to go to the people who are working hard who do have the kids at the struggling school who are upset about XYZ those are the people we need to be talking to like have you heard about this person Do you know about this change that we can create together because it's not just voting for this election we are really talking about movement building and I, I like Solomon's point earlier about the difference between the movement and the man because I think that was a big part of our problem we're talking about the civil rights when we talk about Malcolm X, black power movement, too much of our social change has been built around charismatic leadership and one yeah. particular person versus, you know, the movement and the ideas. So, like, I do agree to some extent about the speeches, and I wish there were things there. I've listened to him speak live, Bernie live, like four or five times now, and so I have heard different things. You know, I've sat and watched the different forums. There was, I know everyone, another big issue for people is his stance on, you know, Palestinian Israeli conflict. He gave a beautiful answer at the um, Families First Forum, which was like the week before the uh, Brown and Black Forum, also in Iowa. That one was not televised, it was only live streamed. But he, gave, he was asked the question about, in terms, since he, since he is very anti militarism, about steering aid away from, you know, just funding the Israeli military, basically, and looking at more of a human rights solution to the whole conflict as a whole, and maybe like directing aid more to human rights relief and stuff like that. He gave a very thorough, and I need to clip the video for that response, but he says things, and it's not that he doesn't believe what he says, but it doesn't get incorporated into the stump, as you guys are pointing out. Right. And I think that part of it is that it's the balance between he's a candidate, but he's also the leader of a movement, and you got to set down the platform and the template for the movement, and we all fill in the bones together. But I really think to be able to reach some of these voters going forward, you know, we need to, um, we need more of that, those specifics in there. And not specifics as in how we're going to pay for this, whatever. We need specifics as in like, 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 like Solomon brought up about yep. the school thing. Because when I heard him say that and the fact that Hillary Clinton has made her comments about in support of charter schools, um, uh, in support of closing failing schools, which many of us live in communities that are that have quote unquote failing schools that yeah. are going to be turned around, you know, and, and, and really when we're also talking about going into um, Chicago again, like when we're looking at the next couple of races coming up, we're talking about Flint and the difference between their responses and Flint. You know, the Bernie campaign has been on site, but like, are we connecting with the community organizations that already have a presence, that already have relationships with people? Are we connecting with them to kind of try and build and work around these issues? Because you know what's happening, and you know what the Clintons have been doing for years? They've been dropping donations, they've been greasing palms, not just with these higher level leaders, but with these local organizations here and there. And that's really what... I really feel like when we're talking about outreach, and, and since it's already grassroots, it's already happening, people don't need to do anything extra. You don't need to spend any extra money. You might need to get on a, on a conference call with some of us to make sure this happens, but you don't really got to do anything extra because you already have a built-in movement. You already have all these people who believe and are who are like really involved and engaged that we don't need you to send out any more staff. I mean, we just need to make sure that we need the messaging. We need to be consistent and clear on what's going on. But there are organizations, there are groups out there. Where, like I said, again, going back to Chicago, I'll use Chicago because Chicago seems to be the most organized some term, in some ways when you're talking about especially this movement that has grown out around the Resign Rom, Resign Alvarez, you know, yeah. movement. That you also got the stuff going on with the Chicago Teachers Union, which has overlapped with some of that too. Those are built in grassroots groups that already have so much credibility in the community. And those are people who support and endorse your candidate. You need to use them on the south side, on the west side, get up in Hobo Park, where that black, where that Homer Square black site was at. 
I mean, seriously, there's so much going on. There's no reason why Illinois, there's no reason why Michigan, there's no reason why certain places should not go for him at all. I mean, even I'm still, even I feel better because I got to talk to Nina, but I'm still a little bitter about Georgia because Georgia, even though it is a conservative state, so to speak, at the same time, there's so much that resonates with, with, with people here with Bernie Sanders' plan. We have 400 or 500,000, I forget the exact number, people without health insurance at all. Why? Because I live in a state without Medicaid expansion. We have thousands more who can't afford their prescriptions and stuff like that. These are like very basic things that people need to understand. When we're talking about creating jobs and investing in infrastructure and stuff like that. What does, I mean, just, just keep it simple. And like Solomon said, like that school thing, that is huge. That is huge. Yeah. And he, he has said other things that just really speak directly to, because again, like I said, Hillary Clinton has these great talking points. She talks very academic, but these are issues that she doesn't know anything about. Why? Because her daughter went to an elite private school. She doesn't know anything about this stuff. She's in bed with people who privatize education. But you know she what? Is. We we have the model. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's some missed opportunities here. Uh, we yep. need we're going to need to do uh, well. Anyway, I'll keep that conversation for later. Uh, let me grab this caller. Remind me to tell you guys about what we need to do.